Whitey Nerdigans. This is the one and only Packer Girl 89. And today's Book Nerdigan discussion video is going to be for Heaven by Alexandra um, Aldernado. And this is the third and final book in the Halo trilogy. So if you have not read Halo, Hades, Heaven, or have watched the um, Book Nerdigan discussion videos on it, then why the commie and RCS are you here? Seriously, go read the books, go watch the videos, and come back here so we can talk about it. Here's the beautiful cover of um, Bethany reaching out to Xavier. I love this. I love the covers. They're so pretty. Um, also, yes, this book is part of the hashtag Angel Readathon, and um, it will be stuff that I mentioned here might be mentioned in um, my uh, Val Angel book Nerdigan rant, which we're getting close to because the next book after this is the first book in the Immortal City series. So yeah we're getting close to that rant and i'm gonna finish what i started but anyway so let's get to this so heaven starts right where the epilogue of hades end and what sealed the deal to get father mel to agree to marry Z xavier and beth was when beth said it's god's will he brought us together for a reason you of all people should know he has a plan for everyone and this is ours it's not for us to question him we just want to embrace what he uh, has created between us and then the grim reaper trained as the angel of death and he has a cowlick and has come for father mel after he married uh xavier and beth and traditionally reapers are only visible to those uh they seek but in this case etiquette has been abandoned every moment seemed deliberate designed to issue a clear message this death was on your hands and beth says to xavier you can't fight the reaper he's acting under jurisdiction if you get in his way he'll take you away too don't make me a widow within um minutes of becoming your wife well on the bright side at least his soul is going to heaven and not to hell and then ivy says that ivy is pissed because when she finds out because she says you betrayed the laws of heaven and caused the untimely death of a man of the cloth have you no regrets in the eyes of heavens it it is um wh what they did was wrong and then gabriel says you don't have uh, you both have to leave venus cove it's not safe for you here anymore you don't just have to leave you have to run and I liked what, I loved what um, Bethany said here. Uh, it just, the writing is so beautiful. I watched the clouds turn elastic, twisting and forming into strange images. A mass of dense clouds stretched until it looked like a hand was reaching through it. The index finger extended and pointing uh, straight down at us. A second later, the finger retracted and became a, um, to become a swirling mass again. Imagined or not, I knew it was a symbol of judgment. That was what my marriage to Xavier uh, would be would be seen as an act of rebellion treason against the kingdom punishable by laws i wasn't even old i wasn't old enough to understand and then uh they settled in the smoky mountains uh north carolina cavern a uh, cabin before gabe and ivy uh leave ivy says this they may look um on you more kindly if the marriage was is uh not consummated and what beth says uh, now we're gonna get into the nephil the nephilim here and see if they're consistent um, they were progeny created a long time ago when the sons of God descended from the heaven, from heaven and were captivated by the beauty of the daughters of man, of men, and they made it and, uh, with them consuming a half human, uh, creating, sorry, creating a half human, half angel race. This is not the same thing. Yes, it is, Beth. It is. You dumbass. Those angels who lay, um, uh, mortals were fallen from grace. It doesn't matter. If they were fall if they were fallen angels or not they're still nephilim they there was also um angels uh for if you remember in the um what series was i think in the hush series they became fallen angels after they created nephilim so your fucking shit is flawed um they rebelled against god and heaven could possibly consider this as a serious um this is serious a wait Heaven couldn't possibly consider this as serious as a transgression, could they? Yes, yes he could, because you saw what happened to the Nephilim. And Ivy says, you have tied yourself to the mortal world just as they did. And after the awkward silence, uh, the Seventh Order has assumed control. They're always sticking their noses in uh, where they, they're not wanted. The Seventh Order was basically a faction of angels created to act as custodians over the nations of the world. And I love what Gabe says. <laughs> Gabe said here, I, he made a joke. What did you want? What, wait, what did you expect? A honeymoon suite at the Four Seasons? I was like, Gabe, you have a sense of humor. <coughs> and Ivy says, uh, they're not coming. They're already here. The two of you have to lie low and stay hidden. Word is they've already started hunting. They are soldiers first and foremost with one objective, find the renegade. So 
here's the deal with the seven. So that's the nickname um, Angels, gar uh, Angels, uh, or the nickname we Guardians had coined for them, and it and it stuck. Um, formerly, they were known as the Principalities or something, or sometimes uh, the Princes because of their status. And after a number of years as Guardians, Angels were permitted to apply to train as Sevens. But it wasn't for everyone. It was like Heaven's uh, version of uh, military service, a strict existence for rigorous training with no interaction with human souls, so, it, uh, so its appeal was limited. And Gabriel's short-term plan, um, our only chance is to confuse them, keep moving, change locations. And Ivy said, uh, your relationship was tolerated. You should have not taken this, the step you took without authorization. Yeah, that was fucking stupid, you dumbasses. You should have just stuck with the promise rings. And Gabe said this, best committed a serious tra transgression. Marriage is, is, um, in, um, indissoluble, uh, covenant, wait, indissoluble co covenant between ma uh, man and women. Um, it could be dissolved. At least Jews can dissolve marriages. There's a religious way to dissolve it. You have to go through the rabbi. But yeah, that, I don't know about you Christians, but Jews, we have it. Um, let's see. You two have pushed your luck in the past, but this time you were way out of line. You cannot overturn the order of uh, creation without repercussions. So get ready for a, um, a reaction, and I don't think it'll be pretty. And the Sevens considered themselves an elite group, and they would never can swap information until they tracked down their prey. And Ivy says this, A long time ago, they used to appear uh, wearing robes and golden girdles. They're ad they've adapted to the times. These days, they tend to appear as men in black. Here come the men in black. Here we go. There are usually signs that precede their arrival. Look out for a blood moon or a, sight a sighting of a white phantom horse. If you see one, a Seven won't be far, from, um, won't be far behind. I wish my life was more like uh, like a Disney movie too, Beth. I'm not gonna lie. Although all angels were created um, to be without ego, the sevens were um, aberration um, aberration to this rule. And some said they were uh, driven by their need for recognition. I knew how uh, the hierarchies that existed on Earth would mirror in heaven, and what lengths some human or angel would go in pursuit of power. Oh no! The one time they go outside, the one time they go outside and disobey orders. They see the fucking horse. They see the freaking white horse that walks on water. And there was nothing uh, human about him. Here's uh, the seven. But um, there was nothing angelic about him either. Like other of his, others of his kind, the seven was faceless. Does anyone else think of, um, uh, God, what are they called? Oh, the brothers in, um, in uh, Shadowhunters? In the Shadowhunter series? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, his lips and nose, his lips and nose uh, blended seamlessly. It was almost impossible to distinguish them. He had no eyes, just empty sockets covered by a white, milky membrane of skin. Um, and Beth set a seven on fire. That was fucking awesome. And Gabriel says this: We've uh, covened with the Arks and the Seraphs. That's why we're late getting back to the cab cabin. And Ivy says the sevens are out for blood. They are not willing to compromise. They uh, want your marriage dissolved. And Gabriel says this, what you must remember about the Sevens is they uh, were created to be Heaven's watchdogs, uh, designed to keep order, but they were they have no understanding of human behavior, so it's easy for their power to get out of hand. The Covenant is working on ways to limit their power. And then Ivy says this, their perception of justice is perverted. Once they have a mission, nothing else exists. Gabriel betrayed, she betrayed the Ark, and will most likely be renounced by the Ark, which he and Michael make the two pillars of. Uh, because he didn't turn Beth Bethany in. Loyalty, man. Loyalty. Um, Ivy says, said this, though. This is not God's doing. The angel hierarchy settled their own disputes. They have not sought, this, uh, sought his counsel. And what Gabriel says this about the Sevens is, uh, the Sevens especially are a rebel faction. The Covenant struggles to keep them under control. I cannot speak for him, but you must not blame him for your troubles. It is the Sevens who seek retribution. Why hiding in plain sight at Ole Miss College is a good idea? Um, the Sevens have finely tuned sensor sensors that pick up electrical cur currents emitted by um, angelic beams. Um, the more humans around, the more diluted the current becomes. So yeah, doing that is a good idea. So changing identities and getting all the Venus Cove uh, kids scholarships to Alabama or Vanderbilt. So yeah, that might be a good thing. And Gabriel gives Xavier um, and Beth his blessing to do the deed. I hardly see the value in denial now. It's too late to placate heaven. It's time we played on our terms. I'm done with strategies. If they can't uh, play nice, then neither shall we. I loved, I love Gabriel's character right now. I love how he's developed. He actually has a personality. 
and the cherry has been popped in the forest without a condom. Oh boy. And yes, I have to read the scene. I'm always do I always do read the sex scenes here. I remembered feeling like I was filling up like a balloon until I felt like I was about to burst. Most of all, I remember not being able to determine where Xavier's skin ended and mine, be uh, mine began. When a dam breaks, what can you do to stem the torrent of water? Perhaps the water can be redirected but can never go back to being contained. That was how I felt then unencumbered by uh, heavenly dictates and tied to Xavier by bonds not even death could break. Yeah, um... That's a good way to say how you lost your virginity, how to describe it. And Gabriel on the latest, here we go. So he has his hands full at the moment. Hell is retaliated. The demons are running riot. Um, uh, their influence has spread and their numbers have tripled in the last few weeks. The world is in serious trouble now. And Ivy says the death of an original has caused quite an uprising. Lucifer is sending his agents out like the plague. And Molly's getting married! Yay! Um... The Sevens were supposed to maintain harmony on Earth, not wreak havoc, but it seemed a handful of mortals' uh, lives lost was a small price to pay for the capture of an errant angel. Yeah, it seems like the powers again, if you remember them in uh, the Fallen series by Thomas E. Sinigowski. Uh The creator is um, probably not involved in this. Yes, this is definitely the fucking powers. Uh, this was a, the work of a celestial vigilante group, a rebel faction that had taken matters into their own hands. And then the Seven showed up in Xavier and Best literature class, and thank God Gabriel and Ivy came to save the day. Thank God. And then Hamiel, that son of a bitch, killed Xavier. That fucking... Ugh. And the Grim Reaper makes a deal if he can convince... Uh, if they can convince Xavier's soul to go back into his body, he'll live. And Beth did it. It was awesome. And shit, Lucifer is possessing Xavier's body now. Oh my God. Ugh. This is very similar to uh, the Mortal Instruments. Gabriel says this, Xavier died, and those minutes on the brink between life and death were more than enough to let darkness in. And good thing Gabriel and Ivy moved to Oxford. And then Ivy says, what's with the racket he's causing? We might as well broadcast it on the 7 o'clock news. I thought that shit was so funny. I'm going to start using that saying. Um, Ivy on the salt circles around the bed and... Xavier is possessed by Lucifer is on. Salt and iron repel demons. And it, so it sounds like Faye to me, as for those that remember when I was reading Faye mythology. I'm going to be doing that again this year, too. Um, but it definitely sounds like Faye. We need all uh, the help we can get here. And Beth says, uh, they're pure compounds, and demons being the essence of impurity can't handle being near them. And Ivy says this, the demon has already gotten inside him, but this will stop him from escaping until we work out how to destroy it. And Gabriel says this, It'll kill him, you know. If we try to rip it out, it would be like ripping stitches from a wound. He won't survive the pain. We need to weaken it first. And this is what Luf Lucifer says in Xavier's body. I could go by many names, but know that I am your adversary, the one who, uh, the one you helped cast into the abyss. I'm putting my affairs in order. I'm here for revenge. Did you think I would let my loss go uncompensated? What's the expression humans like to use? Oh, yes. The devil must be paid his dues. You killed my son. With all your big talk about a father's love, you of all people should understand how I feel. Speaking of which, where are your brothers? Where are your brothers? Have they abandoned you in your hour of need of fear? I expected a little backup from my brothers, but you were all more than willing to watch me burn. He sh uh, should have never favored men upon us, above us. Men in all their weak, pit uh, in their pitiful weakness. I, I'm telling you, Lucifer from The Fallen is way better than this guy. I, I fucking hate this Lucifer. Um, and Gabriel says this, Perhaps that is exactly why he chose them. Because every day brings with it a new struggle for them that we cannot understand. Faith from men is more powerful than faith from angels because they suffer more in choosing to walk with him. Besides, it's not for you to question who finds um, favor in the eyes of the Lord. And then Lucifer says this, um, I wondered if you, experience might have changed you, but I see you're the same righteous jackass you always were, singing his praises like a blind fool. Only Beth can bring Jake back. He'll come back um, for you if you call him by his given name. I never got a chance to say goodbye. I want to give him a chance to settle the score, um, to set his soul at, at rest. His only crime was to love you and you repaid him by sending him to his death. Here's my proposal. You're the only one connected enough to summon his spirit. Why don't you call him and we'll let him decide what's fair. I want you to give Jake something he wants and in return I'll give you your husband back. And Jake said this. His life for Gabriel's wings. And don't worry, they'll grow back in a few centuries. It just means your brother might be earthbound for a while. 
and without his wings, Gabriel would be forced to live a half-life, devoid of purpose and meaning, not to mention it would throw heaven into turmoil. If an ark willingly surrendered his wings to, to a demon, it was uh, like giving it, uh, his divinity as a gift to the ultimate sacrifice. I would, it would more, signify more than I understood and prevent Gabriel's return to heaven. He would be doomed. And then Ivy says this, he gets the pleasure of seeing one of God mightiest cut down. Oh, and he fucking did it. He cut off his wings. And the blood of an archangel was reputed to have life-giving properties. One drop he could bestow immortality upon the one who consumed it. And then, yes, Raphael shows up. I love Raphael. Raphael is awesome. I love him. And he's known for his bad jokes. And I, I love what Ivy said. He says, we're still waiting for him to grow up. And Rafi says this, like Peter Pan, I hope to avoid that at all costs. This is the best, Raphael is like the best archangel ever. I love him. Okay, you know, uh, um, if I got to choose an archangel to sleep with, it's going to be Raphael. I love him. Okay, you know when an archangel is officially awesome when he says, sup bro, to Lucifer? That was fucking hilarious. I would love it when he was just like, sup bro. And Raphael says this, depart this temple of the Lord, show your face no more. I adjure you in the name of your cr uh, creator to depart this child of God. Depart, seducer of, of men, corrupt, corrupter of nations, prince of darkness. You must bow to a power far greater than yours. Do not resist. Your plans will come to nothing. Depart now this, ho um, this holy vessel, stubborn dragon. The longer you delay, the harsher, you punish, uh, the harsher your punishment shall be. We repel your power. Yield, yield. And then Raphael as the patron saints of travelers you decided to come. I guess I'm just a sucker for a lost cause, but you can have fun trying. And Raphael says, the brother-sister thing is really more symbolic than genetic. I happen to find humans good company. And this is why he travels. And that plus uh, the fact I'm easily bored, but they're so worth it. And uh, this is what makes me love uh, Raphael even more. He's a football fan. Yeah, I bet he plays fantasy football too. And then, then we get to Molly on weight. And this, this was weird. And um, this is what uh, she said. Well, I can't tell people who aren't invited to the wedding. Wade doesn't want to invite anyone outside the faith. His family started their own church. It's still pretty small, but it's growing. And they don't re really associate with outsiders. They think it's dangerous. Wade says television is the devil's mouthpiece and that negative messages can be transmitted through uh, social groups as well. Wade says isolating myself from bad things will bring me closer to God. It's a family religion. It's just one of the many versions of Christianity. And she says, um, oh, little things like how I should dress and how I should speak to men who aren't my husband. And don't worry, um, this is what she says to Xavier, you have a wife so you don't count. Well, actually, Wade is my fiancé and I have to be obedient to him. Wade is trying to save my soul from hell. He says your husband's, um, should be uh, your earthly god oh boy we got a cult and then ivy says it's breaking a commandment you shall have no other god before me i love gabriel he always makes the best fucking entrances he says no but your fiance sounds like a raging idiot yeah go gabriel and gabriel says this i'm sick of i'm sick of fighting i'm sick of this endless war between angels and demons and seeing nothing but pain and death around us there has to be something better than this the battle has been raging on for uh, centuries when will it be over and ivy says i don't know but that is how our life always ha um have our lives have always been since the beginning of time and gabriel says this then maybe bethany has been um right all along maybe it's better to be human or at least allow ourselves to love them and then he says to molly i'm saying yes you are flawed you are impulsive and short-tempered brash and foolish your heart is fickle and uh, your mood changes faster than the wind but that is what makes you human and that is what makes you beautiful you belong to no one unlike me you're not owned you're not owned you were uh, created to be free and live to live and love happiness i was not built for happiness i was built for nothing but servitude servitude but you feel so much and, and so pa and uh, so passionately i think it's beautiful and then gabriel kissed molly oh my god that shit was awesome i was just like yes before any of us knew what was happening gabriel took molly's face in his hands and leaned down and kissed her it was like watching a scene from ancient mythology the legendary hero and the fair maiden united i love this writing and Gabriel says, having my wings uh, soft from my back and Lucifer as a house guest, that was too much. This is a release. I won't regret it because this is the first thing I've ever done for myself. Yeah. And Ivy on if Gabriel needs a therapist. Gabriel's seen, seen um, every human atrocity known to man. It'd be a long section. A long session. I thought that shit was funny. <laughs> Sorry. I'm dealing with being sick. It sucks. Um... 
Our essence is contained within our wings. They are the source of all of our power, like the roots of a tree. When the roots are poisoned, the whole tree suffers. He has been weakened, made suspe uh, susceptible to doubt and worry and a uh, multitude of emotions he has never ex um, um, experienced, uh, uh, he's never exposed before. His new feelings for her will disappear and he will return to being the Archangel Gabriel. Our wings are like our soul. Imagine if someone took a knife to your soul. It takes a while to repair. And then this is what one of the seven says. We want to restore order. It is our job to keep the peace. Human, uh, is that what you think he is? There are forces surrounding this boy, Xavier. We lost track of you uh, all of those years ago. You disappeared in a sea of human chaos, but we always knew one day um, you would find your way back. And so you have. Now he must serve us. We have plans for him. Heaven needs you. And apparently, Xavier's power wasn't angelic or human. And then it slowly dawned on me. Air, water, earth, wind all uh, the elements in a single rush he was the embodiment of the earth everything magnificent the earth could produce the strongest forces of nature seemed to be flowing from his body he seemed to have mother nature on his side as if our father were commanding the ev the very earth to its um rise up, itself to rise up and stand by xavier and then the seven's power hit an invisible shield and shattered into a thousand pieces of clay on the ground Second attempt, shimmering opal colored burst um, into flames a foot away, and the cinders floated with down like confetti, glowing confetti. The next orb exploded into a dazzling arc of uh, uh, water soaking the seven. And I love this part. This 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 part was great when uh, seven said arrogant boy, and Xavier's like, "Yep, that's me." I started cracking my ass up. Oh no! So now we're gonna find out. Here's the background to Xavier's powers. So the last time, uh, this is from Ivy, the last time I was on Earth was almost 20 years ago. I was headed to Charlotte, but I miscalculated and landed in Birmingham. I didn't want to speak to anyone, but I met a couple whose car had broken down, and they asked to borrow my cell phone. We got to talking, and they told me they um, were visiting a fertility clinic, but it wasn't working. They couldn't conceive. I shouldn't have gotten involved, but the woman told me they'd been praying for a miracle. I couldn't walk away when I uh, had the power to help them. I gave them a child. When the woman left me that day, she was pregnant. Although she didn't know it, I restored her body to full health so she would be able to conceive in the future. I brought punishment on myself. Nothing happened for a long time, but I eventually found out the couple had given birth to a son and have since had five healthy children. My involvement went no further than this conception. I left him alone to live a normal life. I never expected to see him again. I was ashamed of myself, and after I berated you for getting involved in human life, how could I reveal what I had done? I was a hypocrite. Heaven told me I would see the boy again, that one way or another he'll come back and merge with the world of angels. And this couple, the couple I met all those years ago, their names were Peter and Bernadette Woods. The child is you. I'm so sorry, Xavier. You are still human. You are flesh and blood, just not quite the same as everybody else. And I, she knew this shit. She knew since uh, she, since um, I first met you. This is what she said. We weren't sure initially, but it soon became clear. That's part of the reason why we tried to keep, uh, tried so hard to keep you and Bethany apart. Any ordinary human would not have been able to handle the reality of um, our world. We would have wiped away their memory and moved on. But you were different. And um, why not saying anything at all? Um, you uh, had other things on your mind. Your journey has not been easy. I didn't want to add to your burden. I am not your mother. I do not have DNA that can be transferred. You are Bernadette's child, but I gave you our essence, our spirit. The blood of angels runs in your veins, but so does the uh, blood of your human parents. I suppose you're both. So Gabriel um, says halflings have powers. Um, says this. Halflings have powers. Powers we, we don't quite understand. I'm guessing the, um, uh, the sevens want to find out what uh, they are. Uh, you're the first one they found. There have been others over time, but the angels that created them that created them were not forthcoming about their whereabouts, and for the most part, they lived out uh, normal human lives. That doesn't make them easy to track. They want you and Bethany separated, especially after what happened today. Your combined powers are too strong. They feel threatened. They would continue to monitor Z Xavier and watch him from afar, but he wouldn't pose such an, um, an immediate threat. And the bond you share surpasses the human experience. Otherwise, it's unlikely your relationship would have survived so many hurdles. I'm saying you may not have um, had you may not have had the resources to cope with the things you've seen and the truths that um, have been revealed to you. And then Ivy says this: um, Xavier, the uh, the blood of angels flows in your veins. It means angels will always be with you. It means you are protected and you are and you are destined to be a protector of man. But that but the choice is yours. You can take this knowledge and do something with it, or you can pretend you never found out. And then, then we get to this confrontation with Wade. And then Wade says this. This is how much of a cult he is. 
cultist he is. The only way to conquer the flesh um, is to mortify it, to crush it, to tear it down. You must acknowledge your weakness before the Lord. You must reject those who um, uh, will lead you astray and commit a life of contemplation. Are you ready to commit your life to this church? Are you ready to make the sacrifices um, required to serve as you should? To cast aside worldly vanity as a sign of devotion? Only when we master the weakness of the flesh can we truly be free. And Gabriel said, or no, he said, still says this. She's a woman. That makes her um, corrupt and lustful by nature. It was Eve who introduced man to sin. Well, you know, I gotta say this. Lilith actually is the first for that. Um, but I don't know why Christianity doesn't recognize Lilith. I don't understand why. But yeah, th that is more Lilith than, um, than, uh, uh, than Eve, to be quite honest. Uh, let's see. That makes me more righteous than she'll ever be. And we have come full circle. After Wade vandalized the Oxford ha house, they headed back to Venus Cove. And not Byron, though, uh, who, um, not Byron, though, still hiding from the Seven. And then the Seven kidnapped Nicola to use, uh, to use to bargain. That, oh my god, they used it, one of, uh, Xavier's siblings. Um, we want, and this is what Hamiel says. We want the two of you to be separated. That's, uh, what we've always wanted. Bethany must come with us. We cannot take Xavier because he is one of the elect. Our father has big plans for you. If we did, the consequences would be severe. We live by a, an honor code. The soldiers of heaven will stand by that. And Beth goes back to heaven, and she meets Eve. Um, not the same as, I don't think she's the same Eve as uh, the human because she's an angel nobody's being excommunicated today i'm here to help you in our sessions oh yes every day think of me as your mentor so in best true form she couldn't die or sleep either so there was literally no form of escape she didn't eat or do anything just existed and their existence was to protect and serve the kingdom and our um and our father's creations and they were always uh busy because they there was always another human in need. But Beth was barred from interaction with anyone other than her mentor until she was deemed uh, in a fit condition to work. Sounds like a fucking, uh, um, oh my god. Rehabilit- it, yeah, this is a rehabilitation camp kind of shit. Um, and then Eve says this, there's no point discussing your time on Earth. It's all in the past now. Your memories are, a milest are milestones. You must let go of them. Um, it isn't boring to be at peace. Yeah, it is! That sounds boring! To be at one with a collective cos a cosmic energy, that is greater than anything you can understand. Sometimes you must trust the others, um, that others know what's best for you. Uh, we're trying to help. And I'm with Beth. I'd rather be parting it up in hell. Like, seriously, that sounds more like fun than doing that shit. And why Beth has a body, um, we're making allowances, uh, trying to ease you slowly back into this life. We thought giving you a body for years and then taking it away might be damaging. We're not permitted to marry, you know that. And I could see we still have a fair bit of work to do. Until you understand the, um, that earthly pleasures are nothing compared to the eternal riches of heaven, we're trying to fix you. I doubt Lucifer would be much help. You can't live like this forever. And then Gabriel shows up. Thank God. And I I'm curious how the fuck he showed up when he doesn't have his wings, but whatever. There are people who understand. You have to find them. Play the game. Just play smart. Uh, God's wisdom is infinite. Uh, trust his judgment. And, oh... That's who he meant was Emily, the one that Jay killed, which is Xavier's ex-girlfriend, or her, his first girlfriend. Though it was difficult to summon another angel, I had the ability to reach a soul in my mind. There were uh, millions of them in the kingdom, and we were expected to sift through every one until we found the person we were looking for. And each living soul lived in their own personal heaven. They were side by side, but the kingdom allowed them uh, access to happy memories from their past or a favorite place they liked to visit as a child. I was told there was a lot of tranquil gardens and beaches, but everyone was different. Emily's personal um, heaven was Xavier's room with the younger Xavier. Oh, that is so sweet. And then here's Emily's idea here. You have to see Zach, whose best friend who became a seven. Um, not anymore. Well, he's not a seven anymore. He quit when he, when they started going after you. He was never cut out for that lifestyle. Zach's a guardian. He always has been because he's my guardian. They sent him back to work with children, and he helped me with my transition when I first got here. I had a difficult time adjusting, so they assigned him to help me out, and it worked. Zach made a big difference until he signed up to the sevens. Nobody thought it was a good idea, but he's back now, and of course I've got him on speed dial. And apparently... Rainbow tunnels are the way to travel, but they leave dust. And one must wonder if there is a, a pot of gold at the end. And this is what Zach said. I miss the children. The military wasn't my scene. Oh, you know, I was drunk, made a bad decision. Call it a journey of self-discovery. So, yes, angels can get drunk. Um, I needed to work out where I belonged. I had a moment of doubt, if you will. 
And while there's one way to do that, be with Xavier on Earth, you have to lose your divinity. Everything that makes you an angel will have to go. If you want if uh, you want to live like a human, you have to become a human. There's only one way I know of, and you're not going to like it. You have to tear out your wings. And the Seven broke a lot of rules getting her. And Nikki and, and um, showing up in front of the college students and killing Spencer um, involved. I know, and I'm sorry. They were not authorized to do that. You would need to tell someone who could pass the message on to our father, and he's busy these days. People are losing faith. The world is falling into the wrong hands. Are you sure you want to go back? It's your call, but you should think about it carefully. The decision is irreversible. And Bethany better decide quickly, or Xavier is going to find his way in heaven. And Zach says this, um... You need to find Joseph. He can, he can help you. He'll find you. Um, I'll let him know you're looking. He's the one who's been around since the beginning. Since the word was made of flesh. Uh, since the, yeah. World of, um, was made of flesh. Here we go. He's the leader of an underground group. They call themselves the Society of Dark Angels. There are more of them than you think. Remember, there's a lot that goes up on here that doesn't meet the eye. So yes, there's a rebellion, a rebellion faction of, of heaven right now. And that makes sense. Um, an act of self-violation uh, um, was an act against creation. It went against everything we were um, meant to believe in. And says, Joseph knows a way to get back to earth. Why is he still in heaven? If I wasn't, then who would be left to advance the cause? You and I, we are the cause. There are angels who have um, had experiences just like ours. It isn't just right. Um, it isn't right to give us humanity and then take it away. We should at least be offered the choice. I agree with Joseph on this. That is what we're fighting for. It's not noble, it's practical. Angels who have lived as long as mortals don't make decent angels anymore. And you know what? I'm going to um, definitely reference this in Battle Angel. Just watch. Last, uh, so, the last, so his last time on Earth was several millennia ago. For a time it was happy. I did everything in my power to stay. I was married just like you. I didn't think about the consequences of um, broiling her life in a life of turmoil. She is in heaven, only someplace I can never find her. That's my punishment. Heaven is just, if not always, kind. And heaven is like a labyrinth. There are many realms and some dimensions even the most powerful cannot access. And Joseph says, says this, There will be great pain, unimaginable pain um, that the likes of us have no concept of. What happens to you afterwards is beyond my control. Only those angels who um, survived the transition uh, are, living as human being, are living as humans right now on earth. If it doesn't work, it won't be pretty. The physical trauma alone can be fatal. If you don't transform, you'll end up in a you'll end up a mangled mess. You'll be on Earth in, in sort of a paralytic state, not much use to anyone. Prepare yourself; we'll come to collect you. And Bess says, "Where are we going? The furthermost regions of heaven, where we won't be disturbed." And Bess says, "This you're trying to breach the gap between heaven and Earth. How can that go unnoticed?" And Justice says, "This I love it." Um, we are g very good at what we do. You, you thought uh, power struggles were confined to humans? For shame, you didn't. Uh, you should know this by now. Uh, you mentioned this several times. Yes, Beth, you've mentioned it. Who do you think taught them about power in the first place? We are working to close the gap between heaven and earth. You've heard of the promised land? We want to make the kingdom let souls and angels mingle freely. Darkness will be exterminated. No, darkness will never be exterminated. I'm sorry. Uh, you're, there's always going to be some form of evil. It, it's just the opposite. You always have to have, um, it's a balance, if you will. Whether you live to see that day or not, you have been chosen to play a part. Make that part count. And Eve says, nice try, but the, and then they get back and Eve says this, nice try, um, but the game's up. All right, Beth, Bethany, whatever you say, but from now on, you'll be on round the clock, uh, supervision. I'm locking you up. Um, I'm locking you up. Nobody comes in and nobody gets out. Do you understand? God knows I've tried, but there are better things I can do. I could be doing than monitoring um, a juvenile angel in rehab. Quite frankly, I couldn't care less. You want to stew in your own misery? Go right ahead. I'll check up, uh, check in on you in a few years to see if you changed your mind. And you know what happens to stubborn, stubborn little angels who fail to kick their earth addiction? They end up uh, on the on the celestial scrap heap. We lock them up until they fade, until nothing but cosmic dust, and no one can even remember their names but don't worry you have a few centuries before that happens to you i was saving the best for last when i leave here i'll be filing my report recommending isolation due to mental instability what a bitch and then oh my god and then emily um tackled eve and uh she says you can call me em yay and this is best last flight ever it's so bittersweet right and flying in heaven was different than flying in earth there was no atmosphere to combat so it was more buoyant effortless like, a, I was a balloon rising higher and higher with no destination in mind. In the middle of a glass amphitheater, there was a suspended, um, 
that was suspended in a void of, in space right before Joseph chopped off Bethany's wings. She didn't feel God's wrath like she expected. Nope, she felt mercy and love surrounding her. It was a moment of pure clarity. She was going to be rejected or uh, she wasn't going to be rejected or disowned by God for what she was uh, was about to do. She no longer felt like a misfit, just like one of God's children like everyone else. And Joseph says, it helps you if you keep your eyes closed. Do not expect to feel pain. There's no heaven. Uh, that will come later. And when Beth closed her eyes, she saw a defeated-looking Xavier. A year maybe or more, uh, maybe more than a year has passed um, on earth, and he's still wearing his wedding ring. And in heaven, time did not exist like it did, uh, it did on earth. So, yeah, that explains it. So Xavier still had Beth's fe uh, feather and was about to commit suicide. And Joseph said this, There's one last thing before you go. You must swear a, swallow, a solemn oath in your celestial form. In the event that you survive and wake up human, will you do everything within uh, your power to contribute to the betterment of humankind and the glory of God? Of course she says yes. And when her wings were chopped off, this is what happened. So a mild prickling heat as if best wings were sunburned. Um, then the whole amphitheater was flooded with a blinding light and blasted out the shiny glass surface streamed around them like a wild dance. Belle felt no, felt no pain, only oneness with the light. She felt the uh, light penetrate um, every cell and, fl uh, fl uh, and, flesh it, and flush it with new life. Last image uh, was Joseph with the glowing, uh, a glowing red glory sword. The last thought before Beth's entire being as she knew it was shattered. Xavier, I'm coming. And I thought this was so sweet that every soul of every child that Beth helped transition came to say goodbye, murmuring words of encouragement they had faith in her. And then on the journey, I, I thought this, uh, this writing is just beautiful. Um, I caught flashes of heaven's ineffable beauty. I passed a waterfall cascading like a like liquid crystal, um, a still blue pool with lilies floating on its surface in an explosion of colors. Um, an ancient tree garlanded with um, flowers and rooms filled with thrones. As her limbs began to reform, she landed in the outskir outskirts of a lush garden guarded by a glory sword, um, rotating to cover all four of the Earth's directions. And then here we go. Here's the garden itself. So the garden was vivid skies, blooms drenched in the air, uh, drenched the air in perfume and ripe fruit. Uh, way down the branches of the trees, in, a cent in uh, the center stood the most magnificent tree trees it's not in bows stretched stretching toward me like a hundred arms twinkling like a rosy globs hold on a second okay so i think it's really cool this is the garden is really significant because this basically placed a mark of uh, it marked a crossroad of her journey and beth could still change her mind and go back to heaven um if she turned away from it from it her old life would be gone forever and nothing would ever be simple or straightforward again. A mortal life with uh, all its trials ahead, a hard and stony robe, but not without rewards. And Beth woke up in the ocean, um, ocean in bone deep pain in a filmy cocoon like mesh and surrounded by uh, her gold angel blood. I see why you called this chapter a, a metamorphosis, Alex, because this whole chapter was basically Beth's metamorphosis from angel to human. And Alice motivates Beth to move slash get up and um and lewis uh driving her home back to byron and beth was finally home and then ivy and gabriel went on a mission in romania and xavier said gabriel tried for months to get you back he called on the ark he tried to bargain uh he tried to bargain with them um and again how did he get in heaven minus wings i'm still curious on that pleading with them that um uh, pleading with them nothing worked i think it was uh killing them both so they left but they should be back any day now and all oh, phantom kept vigilant um worrying that beth might disappear again he just stayed with her that was so fucking cute and xavier slept in best rooms and he said you've been gone two years to the day i'm nearly 22 i graduate college next year there's not much to tell you i got into grad school my sister had a baby i'm an uncle now i was just going through the motions inside i didn't feel anything even though i knew i should you were the missing piece everything is complete you know we never got to have um have our honeymoon i think we should go to paris maybe after you take a bath <laughs> and beth said even now even though now i'll eventually die at least i'll have lived in heaven i may have um, had eternal life but i was dead inside you brought me to life it's a gift uh, and and Xavier says, well, that's new. You seem to have grown a belly button just like the rest of us. Your skin doesn't glow like it used to. And this is how it ends. And I thought this was such a sweet ending. 
ends with, um, Xavier took my hand and I felt the smooth surface of his wedding ring against my palm. I don't think you understand, he whispered, his turquoise eyes full of light. From now on, you're going to feel pain, grow old, and eventually die like the rest of us. And despite that, the look of concern on his face, I couldn't stop smiling from ear to ear. I know, I said, it sounds like heaven. I see what you did, Alex. Oh my God, this book was really good. I'd still say Hades is my favorite, but you know, heaven, I really like, I, the key thing here though, and this is going to come up in the, in the rant is how she got back to, uh, um, how Beth got back came back to Xavier. That's the key thing. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the um, comment section below what you thought about this book. What do you think about the mythology of the series? I think it, it's not my favorite. I'm not gonna lie. This is not my favorite. I would say The Fallen has better um, um, angel mythology than this book does, but it's my fa that is my favorite angel based mythology series. So anyway, um, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerdigans Inc. If you love what I'm doing and want to contribute to the Nerdigans Inc. expansion, there's a couple ways you can do that. You could donate to the Nerdigans Inc. Patreon or purchase something off the Nerdigans Inc. Amazon wishlist. Both links are in the description box below. Also, make sure you follow me on the Twits, aka Twitter, follow my Twitch channel, and friend me on PlayStation Network. Everything's in that description box below. And until next time I fell Nerdigans, I will be seeing you later. Bye!